إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اليوم نريد أن نتكلم عن أصل من أصول الإسلام عن أصل من أصول المسلم عن أصل إذا حققناه وطبقناه في حياتنا لتآلفنا وتعاوننا على البر والتقوى على وهو حسن الخلق My brothers and sisters Today we want to speak about a very very important fundamental from the fundamentals of Islam a fundamental from the fundamentals of the believer a fundamental if we acted upon it and actualized it in our lives then we would have came together and loved each other and cooperated upon goodness and piety and the people around us would have accepted Islam being in awe of us wanting to follow in our example that being my brothers and sisters husnul khuluq good manners and high and lofty characteristics ما أحوجنا في هذا الزمن أن نرجع إلى أخلاقنا إلى أن نرجع إلى الأخلاق الإسلامية How much are we in need to return to good manners and characteristics in this day and age, my brothers and sisters? How much are we in need to return to the great, high and lofty characteristics and manners that we found in Islam? أنسينا قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما بعثت لوتمم مكارم الأخلاق Have we forgot the statement of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم when he said I have only been sent to perfect good manners. أن سينا قول الله تعالى مخاطبا رسوله وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم. How we forgot the statement of Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he was saying to his messenger, and verily you are upon a high, great moral conduct and character. ما علمنا بأنه قدوتنا ورسولنا فلماذا لا نسعى لا نسعى نتخلق بأخلاقه. With our knowledge that he is our messenger and he is our example. So why do we not strive to practice the beautiful, high and lofty characteristics and manners that he left behind for us? So, we must, so that we may live amongst each other and our hearts are connected and united. And Alhamdulillah, Islam has made clear to us the high and lofty status of characteristics and manners. And it has made clear to us the high and lofty reward of the individual, of the believer who practices good and high and lofty characteristics and manners in his life. And also, Islam has made clear to us how evil lowly character is and practicing bad manners in your life is. And the evil reward and the punishment of the individual who has bad dealings and practices bad manners with the people. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الصدق يهدي إلى البر وإن البر يهدي إلى الجنة وإن الرجل لا يصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقة. First part of the hadith. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, verily صدق, truthfulness, honesty in speech, it guides and calls to every other good characteristic and manner and good deeds. 
and good deeds and good characteristics and good moral conduct and character will guide you to the Jannah. Allah Akbar. Have we not seen how the Prophet ﷺ is explained to us by using the example of a sidq, the high and lofty characteristic of a sidq, honesty and truthfulness in our speech, how it will guide you to every other good characteristic and guide you to every other good deed. وصدق القائل حينما قال علم أولادكم الصدق سوف يعلمهم كل شيء. And the person who said the beautiful statement told the truth when he said, and teach your children truthfulness and honesty, for verily it will teach them everything. Truthful, truthfulness, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and honesty, it is the highest and lofty types of characteristics. من أعلى مراتب الأخلاق, from the highest and most lofty types of character, good characteristics and manners. And that is why mostly we find the individual who tells the truth, he constantly tells the truth. His actions are in accordance with his statements. This individual most of the time has good dealings and good manners with the people. Because when you are constant, constant in telling the truth, and that being the most highest and lofty types of characteristics, then all of the other good characteristics and manners will be easy for you to practice them. And who is a Siddiq? The Messenger of Allah he said in the Hadith, a Siddiq. Yuktaba in Allah Siddiqa. He will be written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Siddiq. What is this a Siddiq? A Siddiq, he is the one, the truthful individual, the, the one that tells the truth even in the small matters, let alone the big matters and the great matters. He is the one whose actions are in accordance with his statements. He is the one who is who believes in everything that the messengers come with. Everything that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, he believes with. Ma'indu shak abadan. Doesn't have any shak. Doesn't have any doubt in anything that the messengers come with. Who was Siddiq? And when you constantly tell the truth, constantly telling the truth will guide you to good deeds, and your good deeds will grant you yaqeen and certainty, and then, the, and then eventually you'll be written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Siddiq. And a Siddiq came in the second ranking of the four great major groups of the people who will be in Jannah as it came into, in the great verse in Surah An-Nisa when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسْنُ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in a beautiful verse in Surah An-Nisa and whoever obeys Allah whoever obeys Allah and the messenger then he, will be in, he, then he will be in company with the prophets. And who did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention after them? Mubashar. Coming in the second, second ranking after the anbiya, after the prophets. He said, as siddiqeen And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qaddamahum ala shuhada wa salihin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred them and mentioned them before the martyrs and those who die in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned them and preferred them even more than the Salihin, the righteous ones. Siddiqeen. Those who are truthfulness, or those who have truthfulness in their speech. The truth individuals, the honest individuals. Those who their actions are in accordance with their statements. May Allah make us from them. Ameen. Then the Messenger of Allah went on to mention the second part of the hadith. And I mentioned the second part of the hadith. He said, وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورِ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ لَيَكْذِبْ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ He said, and lying in false speech will guide to fujur. Fujur is sin and indecencies and bad moral conduct and every evil. That's what lying will get you to be upon. And these, this fujur will then guide you to the hellfire. An individual will continually, constantly lie until he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. Do we not see how lowly character, such as lying in your speech, having, being unhonest and constantly not telling the truth, being a habitual liar will guide you to evil deeds, and then those evil deeds will guide you to the fire, and then eventually you'll be written and known with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. May Allah protect us from that. And if he wanted our iman, my brothers and sisters, to be complete, if he wanted our iman to become complete, then it's upon us to practice good characteristics and manners. Why? Because the Messenger of Allah, he said, 
أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا وخياركم خياركم لنسائهم. Because the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the most complete of the believers in faith are those believers who have the best manners. The most complete of the believers in faith are those believers who have the best manners and characteristics. And the best of you all are the best of you all to your women. Allahu Akbar. We'll start with the beginning of the first, first part of the hadith. Why is it, brothers, move up. Brothers, move up. Why is it so that individual who practices good manners after actualizing tawheed and actualizing the ibadah between him and Allah and doing the things that are exclusive between him and Allah if he had good manners, his iman would become complete. Because after the tawheed, actualizing tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, and actualizing the ibadah and the worship, the salah, the zakah, hajj, and all the ibadat and worships, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing us with? Every day, what are we being tested with? Tested with? We're being tested with the people. Every day, we're being tested with the people. We're being tested with our wives. We're being tested with our children. We're being tested with the people at the workplace. We're being tested with the brothers in the masjid. We're being tested with the people in the street. Every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us in our dealings with the people. Nah, nah. This is why an individual, who, even if he was kathir al-ibadah, even if he had great worship, even if he was kathir al-salah, he, he prayed a lot. Kathir al-siyam, he fasted a lot. But he had bad manners with the people, he will always have a deficiency in his iman. He will always have a deficiency, a naqs, in his faith. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we made some of you for others a trial. So will you have patience? And Allah is ever all seen. وَقَالَ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, and those who hold back their anger when the people wrong them, those who hold back their anger and those who pardon the people وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah, He loves the muhsineen. Those who even when the people do wrong to them, they return that wrong with goodness. Highest level. Al-Muhsineen. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Furqan, and the close slaves of our Rahman, the close slaves of the most gracious, the most merciful, Ar Rahman. They walk upon this earth in humility. They're humble. Good character with the people. Humble. They, hum they, they have humility. The high, most, greatest humility. And if those ignorant individuals say evil words to them, say bad speech to them, then what do they say? They only say peace. Words of peace. The believer doesn't indulge in those things. If someone says bad, evil words, they turn away. As long as he doesn't physically hurt you and touch you, turn away for the sake of Allah. This is the way, the, this is the way of the ibad al-Rahman, of the slaves of rahman of the servants of rahman those close individuals to al-Rahman. That's how they are with the people. Qalu salam, they say, they say salam, they say peace and turn away from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also said, waqulu nasi husna, and say to the people good words. Waqulu nasi husna, and say to the people good words. Call into good character, call into good manners. That's what Islam is about. Had a deen khuluq. This religion of khuluq. This religion of good manners. My brothers and sisters. And Allah he says, and do not turn away from the people in disgust, looking down on them. And do not walk, and do not walk upon the earth arrogantly. Allah does not love any. Pompous boaster. Now, and there's many, many, many verses like this, my brothers and sisters. We can sit here for hours saying the, saying the ayat, ayat in the Quran, the verses in the Quran that call the good character and manners. But the naqs in this time, the deficiency we have is that we do not understand that. We have not returned back to the Quran to understand these verses so, so that we may apply them in our lives. That is our deficiency in this day and age, my brothers and sisters. 
We all can come from different jinsiyat, different nationalities. This one from Guyana, this one from Yemen, this one from Pakistan, this one from Sudan, this one from Egypt, this one from... How are we, how are we going to come together? After Islam has brought us together, as Allah explained to us in Islam, explained to us in the Quran, what is the next thing that's going to bring us together? It's good manners, and that's also found in Islam. But that's the naqs that we have, that's the deficiency we have. We don't practice it with each other. So everybody's to themselves. This group is to themselves. This one is to themselves. This one is to themselves. But that's not what Islam teaches us. Al Islam lam yu'allimna hakad. Islam did not teach us like that. We're one body, one unit, one body, one unit. We must cooperate with each other. We must come together. That's what Islam teaches us. It's fine to, to, to feel some kind of happiness about, about the people you come from, about the country you come from. Having some honor for that. That's no problem. But at the end of the day, Islam is stronger than that. Islam is stronger than that. Islam takes preference over that. If you and another individual come from the same place, but he's on a different religion than you, and you and a and different another, another brother is not from the same place, but he has the same religion, he takes preference over that brother. That's, how, that's what Islam teaches. We, Islam has a stronger bond than blood, than nationality, than qabila, than the tribe. Islam is stronger than that. That's how we must approach the deen. That's how we must approach our brotherhood and the unity between us, my brothers and sisters. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the next part of the hadith, وَخِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِنِسَائِهِ And the best of you all are the best of you all to your women. And the best of you all are the best of you all to your, to your women. And he says in another hadith, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ He said, and the best of you all are the best of you all to your women. I am the best of you all. And I am the best of you all to my women and my family. Now, لَكِنِ الأسف. However, Many of us, you find them with the brothers in the masjid, you find them with the people in the street, you find them with the people in the workplace. Mu'addaban has great manners. But with his wife in the house, total opposite. With his family in the house, total opposite. Treats his wife like a lowly thing, like a khadim, like a servant in the house. Like she has no rights, doesn't smile in her face, doesn't tell her good words. And she's the one, ta'ibat ma'awladik, and she's the one who was tired all day with your children cooking for you, cleaning for you, doing all these things for you because of one little thing you must one thing he started to hate her and turned away from her and he didn't want to treat her with good manners and he looked down on her that's not what Islam teaches us the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli, the best of you all, the best of you all to your family Naam. so it's hypocrisy my brothers and sisters that we find some of us May Allah forgive us that we have great manners with the people in the street that don't deserve the type of good manners that are not on the same level or, or deserving of the same manners that your wife deserves. But you prefer them over your wife? You prefer them over your children? You treat them better than you treat your wives? You treat them better than you treat your children? La, my brothers and sisters. They deserve the best of our good manners. Your wife deserves the best of your good manners. After your parents, the most deserving good manners is your wife. Naam. Mithaqin dalidha. The pact that's between you and her is Allah, He called it Mithaqin dalidha. A strong, severely strong pact. Rice between you all. You must treat her the best. She must have the best of your character. That's what Islam calls us to. And many of the disbelievers, they try to come to us in this battle. They try to speak about this. Oh, the Muslims don't treat their women correctly. That's from our naqs. That's from our, our deficiency. We're the ones who are not practicing Islam. Islam didn't teach us like that. The Quran didn't teach us like that. The Sunnah didn't teach us like that. Our culture taught us like that. Now, so we need to return back to what the Quran and the Sunnah taught us of treating people with good manners, especially our wives. And then our children as well, my brothers. Let us not forget our children. Our children, my brothers and sisters, we must be the best example and characteristics of manners with them. We must treat them with good manners. The whole relationship should not only be harshness and severity and do this and do that and you said this and you beat them up and this. The whole relationship should not be only built upon that, my brothers and sisters. It should be love. It should be mercy. I'm not saying not to parent your children, not to reprimand your children if they do wrong, but the relationship should be built upon mercy and kindness and gentleness. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah rafiq, yuhibbu al-rifq, yu'ti ala al-rifq ma la yu'ti ala al-unf, ma la yu'ti ala al-unf. The Messenger of Allah, he said, verily Allah is kind and gentle and he loves, and he loves kindness and gentleness. 
and he will give due to kindness and gentleness that which he will not give because of harshness. وقال في حديث آخر إن يسأل النضح النضح حديث إن الرفق لا يكون في شيء إلا زانه ولا ينزع من شيء إلا شانه. He said, verily kindness, kindness and gentleness will not be in anything except that it will beautify it, and it will not be taken from anything except it will make that thing ugly. Now, we must be kind and gentle with our children, show them Islam, teach them Islam, make them love Islam through our manners and characteristics first before the teaching. They must say, my father, man, this guy has beautiful manners. All I remember growing up with this guy was beautiful characteristics and manners. He portrayed Islam in such a beautiful way. I can never leave Islam. He, he built me a beautiful foundation. You don't want to have the opposite. You don't want our kids to get older, 18, 19, 20, and they say, my father was too hard for us. He ran us away from Islam. And this is what we see in this day and age, my brothers and sisters. This is why this topic of khuluq and manners is very important. The people do not accept the nufus. Ma taqbal al haq bil umf. The the people, the souls, they do not want to accept the truth when it's given to them in a hard, harsh-hearted way. Even if you tell them one plus one is two, in a hard-hearted way, they try to tell you it's three. That's the way Allah created us. But if you give it to them in a good manner, with good characteristics, good khuluq, he's going to accept it. He can't help it. Ahsan ila nasi tista'bid qulubahum. Be good to the people and you will own their hearts, as the Sha'ir said, as the poet, poet, poet uh, as the Sha'ir said. Be good to the people and you will own their hearts. Be good to the people and you will own their hearts. We do not control our hearts. And we all know the more we've seen a person doing good to us, the more we lean towards them. That's the tabi'ah. It's natural. So especially with our children, be good to them, be kind to them. Teach them Islam in a beautiful, gentle way and they will love Islam. Because the haqq is mawjood, the truth is in it. All we have to do is give it to them, and display it in a good manner. And what is the ajr? What is the reward of the individual who has good manners? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ لَيُدْرِكُ بِحُسْنِ خُلُقِهِ دَرَجَةَ الصَّائِمْ الْقَائِمْ He said, barely the believer will reach with his good manners, the level and the reward of the individual who fasts the days and prays in the night. The believer who practices good manners and characteristics, he will reach the level of the individual who fasts the days and prays in the night. Now, due to your good manners and characteristics and dealing with the people, even if you weren't you did not have that much worship but you did the wajibat and was obligatory upon you you will reach the level inshallah ta'ala of the one who fasts the days and prays in the night Allahu Akbar وَإِذَا رَدْتَ بَيْتًا فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ فَعَلِكَ بِخُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ and if you wanted a house in the highest place of Jannah then it's upon you to practice good manners my brothers and sisters because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said أَنَا زَعِيمٌ بِبَيْتٍ فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ حَسْنُ الْخُلُقِ he said, I ensure and I promise a house in the highest place of Jannah for the individual who practices good manners and characteristics. Allah Akbar. I ensure and I promise a house in the highest place of Jannah for the individual who practices good manners and characteristics. And if you wanted to obtain the love of the Messenger of Allah and his companionship in Jannah, then it's upon you to practice good manners and characteristics. Because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, he said, the most beloved of you all to me, of the most beloved of you all to me, and the nearest of you all to me on the day of judgment, are the best of you in manners. The best of you in practicing good manners and characteristics. Allahu Akbar. And if you wanted your scale to be heavy on the day of judgment, my brothers and sisters, then practice good manners. Because the Messenger of Allah, he said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقَلُ فِي مِزَانِ الْمُؤْمِنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغُضُ الْفَاحِشَ الْبَذِيءِ He said, there's nothing more heavy on the scale of the believer on the day of judgment from his good manners than his good manners. And Allah, he hates the individual who practices lowly character and lowly manners and speaks about filthy things. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد ما مشى على الأرض أحسن خلق أحسن خلقا من رسول الله كيف لا وهو الذي اصطفاه الله لينزل عليه كتابه وهو الذي قال الله عنه وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم وقال وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لم فض من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر There is no one who walked upon the earth that had better manners than the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم How not when Allah سبحانه وتعالى has chosen him exclusively to send upon him his book to send upon him his words to send upon him his ayat and he is the one who Allah سبحانه وتعالى said about him Verily you are upon a high, great moral conduct. And he said about him, we have not sent you. We have not sent you except as a mercy to all of existence, all of mankind. And he said about him, after the battle of Uhud, when the Muslims received a loss and they were in turmoil, he said, and if you were hard-hearted and harsh with them, talking about the Sahaba, then they would have most definitely left from being around you. Allahu Akbar. وَلِذَلِكَ لما سئلت عائشة رضي الله عنها عن خلقه ماذا قالت؟ قالت ألست تقرأ القرآن إن خلق النبي الله كان القرآن. And because of that, our mother Aisha رضي الله عنها when she was asked about the خلق about the character of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم what did she say? She said, Do you not read the Quran? She said, Do you not read the Quran? Verily, the character of the Prophet of Allah was the Quran. Allah. And Anas ibn Malik, Khadim Rasulullah, the servant of the Messenger of Allah, he said the Messenger of Allah had the best of character. He was the best in character. No one had better character than the Messenger of Allah. وَقَالَ خَدَمْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر سنين فما قال لي قط أف ولا قال لي شيء فعلته لما فعلته ولا لي شيء لما فعله ألا فعلت كذا And he said, I serviced the Messenger of Allah for ten years. I was a servant of the Messenger of Allah for 10 years. 10 years old when he became the servant of the Messenger of Allah, for your information. He was only 10 years old. So how many mistakes will a 10 year old as a servant make? He said, I served with the Messenger of Allah for 10 years. I served with him for 10 years. And he never said to me not once, oof. He never said to me once, oof. A sign of disgust or anger for something that I did. And he never said to me for something that I did, why did you do it? He never said to me for something that I did, why did you do it? And he never said to me for something that I didn't do, if only you would have did it. Allahu Akbar. Do we not see the great character and the manners of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Even when he is deserving of scolding an individual, speaking to someone with harshness, he still, due to his great lofty character, didn't do it. He didn't want to hurt the feelings of Anas ibn Malik. Ten years as a servant, in the house of the Messenger of Allah, he never said to him not once, oof. He never showed him a sign of disgust. Do we understand what is being said? Anas ibn Malik said, 10 years, 10 years. I am the servant of the Messenger of Allah. He never said to me not once, oof. Never said to me not once, oof. Never showed, showed a sign of disgust for what I did. وعن أبي هريض رضى عنه قال بال أعرابي في المسجد فقام الناس ليقعوا فيه فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوه وأريق على بوله ذنوبا بالماء On the third of Abu Hurair رضي عنه he said that a Bedouin man came to the masjid and he peed and urinated in the masjid The Prophet and the Sahaba were in the masjid a Bedouin Arab man he came in the masjid and urinated in the masjid and so the Sahaba they stood up to jump on him and prevent him from doing that What did the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say? He said دعوه leave him just leave him and just pour upon the place where he urinated a bucket of water. Then he said a very great kalima that we must take, we must strive to take the lesson from it. He says, فَإِنَّمَا بُعُثْتُمْ مُيَسِّرِينَ وَلَمْ تُبَعَتُمْ مُعَسِّرِينَ He said, because verily, you only have been sent as those who make things easy for the people, and you have not been sent as those who make things hard upon the people. Allahu Akbar. The Messenger of Allah, look at his beautiful teaching. Look at his beautiful teaching and his beautiful great hikmah and wisdom. Dealing with the ignorant people. Look at the way he taught the Sahaba. He said, Verily, you only have been sent as those who make things easy for the people. And you have not been sent as those who make things difficult and hard upon the people. Let's not make the deen hard upon the people. With our bad manners and jumping on them and being hard and harsh-hearted with them. 
the Messenger of Allah did not call us to that, especially with the ignorant individuals. We must call them to the deen with lutf and gentleness and kindness so that they may accept Islam. Especially us being in this country, we're like ambassadors of Islam. We're like ambassadors of the deen, my brothers and sisters. We're like ambassadors of the deen. Whether we want it or not, everything that we do, they're going to associate with, associate with Islam. Every single thing that we do from goodness or evil, they're going to associate with Islam. saying that's how the Muslims act, that's how the Muslims believe. So let's strive to understand this responsibility that's upon our backs, my brothers and sisters. And not show them except goodness to our manners and characteristics first. So hopefully that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use us as an avenue to guide them. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أوزعنا نشكر نعمتك التي نعمت علينا وعلى والدينا ونعمل صالحا ترضاه ودخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين أقيم الصلاة